just a moment. But first, joining me now, Sean Spicer, the chief strategist for the Republican National Committee. Sean, Tuesday night is the next Republican debate. According to NBC News and the Wall Street Journal, the front runner of your party now is Dr. Ben Carson. He was on this network on Friday morning. Here's what unfolded. This is a bunch of lies. This is what it is, a bunch of lies attempting you know, to say that I'm lying about my history, I think it's pathetic. And, and basically well, what the media does is they try to get you distracted with all of this stuff mm -hmm. so that you don't talk about the things that are important mm -hmm. because we have so many important things. And, you know, I'm not proud of the fact that I had these rage episodes, but I am proud of the fact that I was able to, to get over them. I don't know if you saw it in real time. I'm sure you heard about it. You've now seen a piece of it. What do you make of that relationship between Ben Carson, Dr. Carson, and this network? A lot of times as conservatives, we feel like that, that members of the media want to attack or destroy us, and I think he feels that way now. Now, as far as the accuracy of, of the reporting of CNN and, and, and his story, I really haven't kept track of the TikTok, and that's up to his campaign. Um, and CNN to go through. But I think that a lot of times conservatives feel like there's an, there is an attack mode from the media when it comes to, to conservative and Republican candidates. Let me tell you something face-to-face uh, -face that I, I have said relative to the RNC and, and see if you differ. Uh, I have said that this type of take on the media mentality plays very well with the base. It could help you win the Iowa caucus, but it bodes poorly when you're trying to win over independence in a general election. So that when Ben Carson won't answer the questions put to him by CNN and says, this is garbage or a pack of lies, he's only delaying the inevitable. It helps him in Iowa, but I don't see someone like that being able to defeat Hillary Clinton. Am I wrong? Wait a second. Look, I mean, you look at Hillary Clinton with the email scandal, with Benghazi, the level of evasion that they've had, the attacks that they've had on the media. That's what I think is the problem, Michael, is that when it comes to Republicans, everyone says, oh, you guys are so dismissive. It's always the media's fault. Da, da, da. When Hillary Clinton makes the same claims, everyone rushes to her defense and says, you know what? You Republicans have been too tough on her. And she's answered that question. I mean, there is such a huge double standard when it comes to how the media treats Republicans. Republicans and how the how the media treats Democrats. That's just it, it's a fact. Yeah, I don't know that it's so a it's fact. It's not I mean, a question. Of, frankly, it's it's not may, a question of, of can I say a, it may have been a fact 30 years ago when when really there were very few outlets and I would concede to you generally speaking they were left of center. But Hillary Clinton, like the first question put to her in the only debate thus far was by Anderson Cooper, and the gist of it was. How in the world are you going to get elected when so many Americans find you untrustworthy? I mean, not exactly softball. No, it's not. But it was one question. And I think when you look at, again, as I pointed to you, this idea that we're getting softball questions is nuts. That first debate on Fox was serious, hard-hitting, tough questions. There's no one. In fact, the moderators in that thing got praised by the liberal media by saying, you know what, they did ask tough questions. I think the problem with the mainstream media is they don't understand the toughness, intensity, scrutiny, and intelligence that conservative media brings to the table. Well, what I'm, what I'm arguing is that a, that a Fox-only constituency cannot get your man or your woman elected. Here, here's one more clip. I can't Ooh. believe that you used to work on Fox and as you've turned into that. <laughs> I don't believe it. I'm glad you brought that up, Dr. Carson, because you also something about Fox News that I'd like to play from that very same speech. Let's play that clip about your thoughts on Fox News. Even if all the media tries to shut you down, which they have tried very much to do with me, uh, but they can't because the good Lord has provided me with mechanisms like my syndicated column and like Fox News. We'd be, we'd be Cuba if there were no Fox News. Now, as you point out, I did work at Fox for many years, and I do have many friends there still who are excellent journalists, but I'm not sure that even they think that without their reporting that we would be Cuba. You mean that if Fox News didn't exist, we would be a communist country? No. Uh, again, there you go with sensationalism. That's what you try to do. And, and you hope that somehow that will resonate with people who don't think for themselves. Dr. Carson, you said I got it. News I'm for actually you. People quoting are you. People are smarter than you think they are. I show you that because the question I'm asking is whether a Republican presidential candidate can get elected playing only in the Fox 
sandbox during the nomination process? Well, I, I don't think anyone's suggesting that they do. I think the reason that Fox, just, just as a side note, the reason that Fox News is so successful is because they are covering stories, talking to people that the mainstream media ignores. And I think the American people, is, is the reason that they, they're drawn to Fox is because of that. So I, no one's suggesting by any means that there be Fox only. But I think it would behoove many members of the media to understand that part of the reason that Fox and places like Breitbart and The Daily Caller and others have grown to be successful is because the mainstream media, frankly, is not understanding what a lot of Americans are actually dealing with, people who they respect, issues that they want covered. Do you think that Dr. Carson has been treated fairly here at CNN? It's, I, I, look, I'm not trying to evade the question. It's not, I don't, I don't follow the back and forth between CNN and, and Dr. Carson. I, I've had a great relationship with a lot of the folks at CNN. I think, by and large, CNN does a great job of covering the news. I can't speak to Dr. Carson's relationship with CNN, nor do I want to speak to any of our candidates' uh, relationship with, with your organization or any others. That's up to them to tell you uh, how they feel they've been treated. You're a media strategist, so, you know, this is your stock and trade. And a week like this, where there's been a contentious situation with CNN or any other outlet and Dr. Carson, do you have direct communication with the candidate? I guess I'm asking specifically, did you speak to Dr. Carson or the Carson campaign this week as the media uh, head of the RNC, given that he's the front runner? No. At this point in the game, and our job at the RNC is not to be involved in campaigns making decisions or, or strategy or sound bites or anything like that. Sean, thank you so much for being here. You bet, Michael. Thank you for having me.